I'm not going to let you down again. Don't worry. I won't let you suffer. Not anymore! Hello everybody, Megazard X here. I'm back at it again to give y'all another very exciting episode review over My Hero Academia. And this time I'm going to be reviewing episode 74, La Million. Now, some of y'all might be thinking, wait a minute, shouldn't this review have came out last week? And technically it should have. However, there was um, some unfortunate circumstances that happened to play out because Funimation, that are the ones that actually dubbed the My Hero Academia series, actually, you know, due to some unfortunate incidences, and circumstances that they have to actually delay the dub so right now if you're watching the sub episode 75 is out but for everybody that's a dub watcher episode 74 is out so for me and my reviews as i go from this point forward i'm going to continue on um, reviewing them as i watch the episodes in the dub so if you're if you're a dub watcher you know th you know you just had a one week break and this didn't really affect you or anything like that though but if you happen to be a sub watcher um, unfortunately, I won't have the review out, you know, by the time you're watching the sub, it'll have to be almost about a week later until you're actually able to see me review what would have been the last week's episode. So, yeah, thanks for bearing with me and all of this, though. It's a nice one-week break and everything, though, but I'm ready to dive straight back up into this. So, without any further ado, if you hadn't seen my last uh, episode review over episode 73, you can go ahead and click that card in the corner, check that video out, and then come back and check this one, though, because, oh, boy, this one, oh, man. Alrighty, so if you want the true definition of what a hero is, Lemillion in this episode is the definition about it. There's no if, ands, nor buts about it. And this episode, oh man, it's a huge improvement over the last one because, you know, the last one was a little bit slower though, and I knew this one, based upon um, the last episode preview, I knew this one was going to be good though. But I did not think they were going to start to hit on those emotions the way they did towards the very end of this episode as I'm about to get ready to break this all down, though. But without any further ado, let's dive straight up into this uh, episode review of My Hero Academia. <laughs> So starting off at the very beginning of the episode, we basically get to see Overhaul along with his right-hand man, and they were discussing about how they use Ares' power in order to kind of form that drug that basically was able to take away somebody's quirk. And it basically said, you know, it took them several months and a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money to be able to do it, but they finally perfected that drug to where now it's sort of kind of out of that beta phase that they used um, earlier within the anime, though. But now this is like the real deal substance they got. However, you know, it was a small amount of it and this is the reason why overhaul needs um, help from other people from other outside forces and he needs to basically kind of make his pitch out there so that way people can you know given the funds and stuff needed so that way he can start mass producing these things and that way he can get a little further on along with his plan though so that's essentially the plan that overhaul actually has in terms of using this um, in terms of using Ares power in order to be able to kind of mass produce these bullets and to be able to effectively use this within its overall plan that we're still trying to get a good grasp of it though but i think we started to get a little bit of hints about it um throughout this episode though and then however instead of picking up in the last tail ending moments from the previous episode we actually got to dive back into the past just a little bit where toga and twice basically were meeting overhaul and for them to basically join their yakuza group after their request of overhaul saying to sugar rocky say hey you know what i need a couple of your members so that way we, we can kind of get even and be on sort of kind of this um even level foot and basically you know what the two you know obviously still don't like overhaul because he's the dude that basically killed one of their members though however during the talk and spill of everything Overhaul asked both of them, hey, what are your quirks? And both of them said, you know what? We ain't gonna tell you squat. We'll tell you when we feel like we're gonna tell you. However, one of the henchmen behind Overhaul was like, yeah, I got I got other plans for you. I got other plans for you, y'all. And essentially, he started using this quirk, and he basically got the 
the other two basically tell the truth and then you got to see um twice basically break down his quirk and say you know what his quirk is basically double and um and with him using his quirk you know he basically has to know as much information as possible as the other um as much information as possible on the person that he wants to make a double of however the double doesn't last long because you know it kind of gets mushy after it takes a, like a little beating or whatever though and then uh and then to toga is just looking at the dude like bruh like did you really just tell him all about your quirk just after the fact that you said you weren't gonna say squat and it was kind of funny just seeing that little brief moment of pause like that like oh shoot and then you know the dude basically says hey what's your to quirk toga and immediately she started giving the spill on her saying how you know uh, her power is based upon the blood that whoever she drinks and with her power you know you know the more of it they actually she actually drinks you know she's able to keep um form of that person you know that much longer and also along with you know making a copy of whoever she's trying to imitate she also getting them replicate the clothes as well though and you know she's talked about how you know what she's trying to really impersonate somebody she probably be naked before she does this thing to wear that way the clothes um doesn't like because the clothes kind of form underneath the clothes that she's already wearing or whatever though so she she always got like super embarrassed about that whole entire thing which also kind of explains why you know she's always busting out at the scene you know during those one mo during those few moments like what we saw in previous seasons that made things a little bit questionable but at least now we got a little reason why all that stuff tends to happen but after this flashback scene was over with, then we get brought back to the moment where we actually get to pick off from the previous episode where Toga was basically provoking um, Iranaka to the point where this dude just started losing all sorts of kind of control. And you got to see his quirk just bust out and you know, like different pieces of the wall were all shooting out of the walls. And it seemed like this dude lost all sense of control. And this is the part that got me questioning like, wait a minute, why in the world was Toga provoking this dude so much to the point that he basically would lose control and then it was in this moment of all of this sort of kind of confusion and stuff that Izuka was able to actually pinpoint where um, Iranaka actually was in this sort of kind of little hiding hole or whatever though and then at that moment Izuku finally you know took charge and he basically sprung himself forward and sent one of his um, smashing kicks into the wall and that actually exposed Iranaka and it was at this moment where Eraserhead was able to use his quirk and was able to shut down Iranaka's quirk so that way the walls and stuff weren't moving around crazy non-stop anymore and then we got a little assistance from um, Sir Nadai throwing one of his um, little things at him and basically knocking the dude out unconscious and then Izuka was able to catch the dude and you know all all's well that ends well and basically they finally were able to put a stop to this dude that has been like a huge hassle for the past few episodes um with the with the never changing and never ending um wall shifting and stuff the pitfall traps and everything else that this man was trying to throw out him to slow him down so basically they re removed this huge threat that was basically slowing them down throughout all of this and it was weird because both of them were or all of the heroes that were there they were basically coming to the grand conclusion that hey you know what the league of villains actually portrayed the yakuza group like they actually turned on him so now it's just kind of questioning you know when in the world would you know the league of villains will actually turn on the yakuza to actually do their overall plans because it seems like they're starting to put that stuff into motion though but we'll have to come back to that at a later later date and time though because oh shoot this is where the real mess started to go down and we finally get to see Togata actually make it and confront overhaul down in this hallway and we're like oh shoot like man this dude actually was the first one to manage to catch them and and man Togata was like by golly you know what I am gonna save Ari this time around because you know what the first time I had to leave her with you and I hugely regret me from doing it though but in his best interest it seemed like it was the right move to do though but you know for the past couple few weeks he's been really regretting his decision and it's been really kind of eating him alive though However, Overhaul said, you know what, man? Hey, you know what? If, if you're smart, you, you won't even bother us, though. But hey, essentially, you know what? You're going to die. And 
Togedo was like, not on my watch, boy. And then he started sprinting towards him. And then all of a sudden, you know, Togedo started moving like a little bit left and a little bit right. And he was like, wait a minute. Like my balance is kind of thrown off, though. And you got to see some dude kind of hanging up in the top of the ceiling. He was sort of kind of drinking some stuff, though. And he was all dizzy and stuff. And then the other dude... There was another man that was actually holding the gun, and he basically told Togedas, hey, what, what is your quirk? And he basically told him, hey, how he can basically pass through objects and stuff like that. And he's like, dang it, like, why in the world did I say that? And, you know, and then they basically started to show what these two guys' names were and what their quirks were. So the first dude was called Shin Namoto, and his quirk was confession. And he basically could get anybody to tell the truth whenever he's talking to them, which is actually, oh gosh, that could be a, oh my goodness. Imagine if everybody's mother had that quirk. Oh shoot, every, <laughs> every child, when they're doing their nasty, or their crazy shenanigans and mess and stuff, oh man, you couldn't have been hiding nothing. From it. That would be a deadly court for any mother to have. And then the other dude, um, the Dero so Sakaki, his quirk is slosh, and basically with his quirk, anybody that kind of gets close to him, their center of, or essentially, like their equilibrium is thrown off, so basically they can't sort of kind of have like a sense of balance and like uh, a center of gravity to the point where, you know, you're not going to be kind of slosh and be wishy-washy or whatever, though, as you're like walking around, like you have your balance about you, essentially. So imagine yourself, you know, getting spinned around in a circle and then trying to um, walk right after that. That's essentially what Toga, Toga does, basically feeling right now though but anyway this dude was basically trying to play some mental warfare with him and he was basically kind of pulling out that dark truth of him and saying you know what hey you really regret your past about, uh, about you know not saving Aerie and stuff and it was kind of the tag team combination between him um, hitting him mentally and the other dude throwing off his balance and stuff and trying to hit him physically but basically throw off his mojo to where if he can actually manage to lose his concentration even if it's for a small little moment that's where those Yakuza members knew that they basically would have won that battle though but despite all of this um, despite all of this Togeda did not fall and he was still able to have a sense of control about himself and the powers that he was able to use and he was still able to kind of zip around move in and out of the walls and stuff and then he started going 90 to nothing and started punching him and started um, giving him the what for and started zipping all the way around to them and he was basically able to make quick work out of the, the other two and he managed to subdue them and then basically at that moment he started to go after the real head honcho where the real meat and potatoes were and he basically try to confront Overhaul and it was during this moment where he actually managed to barely graze Overhaul just by a little bit and then swinging around he managed to actually manage to put his leg and make it intangible kick through Aerie so it didn't actually kick her and then turn around and try to kick that man and I was like during this moment I was like oh shoot I was like man this man's pulling out all the stops to try to stop this man and he finally managed to grab hold of Aerie and he's like I am not letting you go again um, not after the first time I did that though and it was at this moment where overhaul started you know started to kind of almost go through like a little mental breakdown almost a little bit though but he started to get a little freaky or whatever though and it was at this moment where Togedo was like you know what no matter what I'm not gonna let you um stop I'm not gonna let you stop me this time though but then you know overhaul's like well you know what playtime's over now he took the gloves off and you know you know when he takes those gloves off um, it's fighting time because we know with Overhaul's quirk, he's able to break down things and reassemble them in any kind of way. So he's basically able to reshape matter. And throughout all of this, he started to create like huge spikes out of the floors. And you know, and then he started to basically play like a, like a mental game with him to a degree because throughout the rest of this part of the fight, he knew that hey, if I basically can manage to hurt Ari and like tear her up and like physically, you know, break her down or whatever though, just kill her or whatever for like a brief moment, he basically know that that would be checkmate for him because only he overhaul can actually be able to put Ari back together. And thinking about this for that one quick moment really just mm, man I, I really got a bone to pick with this man though because the thing that he basically would use her as a means to be able to get to Togeda because he knew that hey if I can put some damage on Aerie only I can be able to save her and there ain't nothing you can do about it so I can actually win at that I think that this dude had the wherewithal to even think about using Aerie like that just 
ooh, this really gets me, um, gets my stomach churning and stuff like that. I'm like, dang, this dude really, oh my gosh, he really doesn't care about anybody like this. Like, he basically has, like, no heart, no soul whatsoever, um, with anything in terms of his plans. Like, I've never seen, um, anybody act like, like, even villains, like, you look at Sugar Rocky to a degree, even though he's trying to do evil things and stuff like that, he still cares about the people that's around him, as we've been seeing, um, throughout this season, though, and, oh gosh, it's, this is crazy seeing Shisaki at work like this, though, but eventually there was a moment where, you know, Togeda noticed that, hey, you know what, I'm not going to be able to do any kind of fighting while I still have hold of Eri like this. So basically, he put Eri down for a brief moment, and it looked like, you know, part of the, the cape was covering him or whatever, though. And then he basically, um, he basically disappeared for a brief moment, though, but we couldn't tell that by looking at the cape. And then eventually the cape fell, and he was like, wait a minute. And then um, Overhaul was like, wait, move, man. And he pushed one of his um, sideline sidekicks out of the way. And he was like, dang. And he was like, he basically, and then Toga in, the, Toga in this moment mentioned that, hey, you know what? It is actually the reason why heroes actually wear capes is because to keep other um, people that they're trying to save warm and to keep, you know, kind of shield them from being able to see all of this kind of crap that's about to go down. Which I think is actually like, kind of a unique kind of spin on you know heroes with capes and everything like that because for the most part I always view uh, a hero wearing a cape as just something super flashy and there's not like a real meaning behind it though but I like the mindset and mentality that um, Togeda actually had in terms of his ideas of what a cape should actually do though that's just my little quick tidbit on that though but anyway essentially at this moment we basically had Togeda playing a little bit of offense and defense because it was at this moment that you know overhaul noticed that hey you know what Aries you know completely undefended or whatever though so if I can manage to get one of my things to impale her it's checkmate game over though but that's when Togeda came in here and he started laying several licks and punches um, to overhaul and he just went non-stop at it because basically he had to play enough of an offense to where that was the defense that was still keeping Aerie in the game. And he thought he took care of one of his underlings though. However, it was in one of these um, brief quick moments where Overhaul basically chunked some bullets over towards the dude. And essentially he said, hey, you know what, take the shot. And then this dude was like, you know, he, he basically put the ammo in his gun. He's like, you know what, I only got one shot. But how in the world am I supposed to shoot somebody that's intangible like this? Like, he can shoot the bullet and the bullet can go straight through Togeda. So then he's like, what in the world am I going to do? And then eventually it just hit him. He's like, wait, I got to shoot somebody or attempt to shoot somebody that Togeda actually cares a whole lot about. And he knew that person, it was Aerie. So it's at this moment where he pointed the gun towards Aerie. And then it was like, you know what? And goodness, this is where I start to actually think about the episode. It's like, dang, why in the world did you do this, man? Now, morally speaking, this is the right thing to do to protect that girl at all costs. Because even if I was in this situation, I probably would have done the same exact thing. Because it's this, you know, human impulse just to protect somebody in a need like that when you're a hero like that. And he basically took the shot and bullet for her because he couldn't go intangible and let that bullet fly through her or hit her or whatever though. But then this is where one of these major flaws I actually thought about during this episode. Think about this for a moment. If that bullet were to actually hit Aerie, whatever Aerie's quirk is, that mess would have been shut down. If that stuff would have been shut down, there would have been no way that Overhaul would have been able to create any more bullets that could have threatened any other heroes with them losing their quirks. So think about that for a moment. Chew on that and swallow that pill for a moment. Because if she would have got shot by that bullet, it, it didn't seem like anything that would have been like lethal to somebody's health. Like, it, like her life wouldn't be on the line. She would just lost those powers. And if that would have been the case, then all's well could have been ends well because they could have essentially solved the whole entire problem right then and there if she would have bit the bullet. But no, Togeda had to play the hero, which is really respectable from him, though. But just keep that in the back of your mind as we're going throughout the rest of the season because you got to make a story out of it somehow, some way. So I, I guess that's what the writer originally thought about whenever, <laughs> whenever he let this scene play out the way it did, though. But anyway, it was at this moment where Togeda basically lost all of his powers and he really couldn't do any of that crazy stuff that he used to do anymore, though. But then all of a sudden, Togeda chunks that dude 
as like a pillow or whatever though and basically uses him and he basically was able to close the distance in between overhaul and he's even though this dude still didn't have any other powers after that, he was still going 90 to nothing at Overhaul, just punching and kicking him, doing whatever he could. He had to also kind of avoid um, Overhaul's quirk because he knew if you know that quirk touched him, it was game over because he was gonna, you know, pop like a balloon or whatever. Though, but despite him not having any powers, this dude found a way to keep fighting and keep um, keep fighting, finding that determination and drive. And it was during this moment where I just saw a lot of All Might within togeda during this moment though because man you man this dude oh shoot he just pulled a lot of things that all might technically would have and we technically actually saw all might do this as well because whenever he was fighting all for one he was fighting him to the point where he was really losing a ton of his quirk which you know that's the reason why he's retired right now this is some same actions that all might would technically do that togeda is doing right in front of Aerie's eyes and she's like dang you know this dude's taking all these beatings and stuff like togeda was literally getting stabbed by the other dudes um by the dude's quirk and you know he he didn't have his you know he didn't have his quirk anymore to be intangible though so he was taking all these hits for airy because he didn't want no more harm coming to this man and you know th this kind of gave like a little bit of a shed of a tear to my eye because i was like dang i was like this is a true hero through and through he, he fought from the point where he had his powers he was feeling pretty good or somewhat decently confident about what he could potentially do to protect Ari to the point where he almost had nothing and he was taking some serious injuries and even getting stabbed in the leg as well as um partially within his chest and I was like dang you know all was seeming um seeming pretty bad for this dude and it didn't seem like there was much more life left in him because it seemed like overhaul was just about to go for that um that death kill though but it was at that moment where over or where not overhaul but it was at that moment where Toga that actually called out and it was at this moment where Zuku managed to go busting out through the walls and that is essentially where the episode ends and I was like oh shoot you can't stop the episode right there like this stuff is actually getting so good yeah episode 75 is already out for the sub if y'all want to keep on um, watching out keep watching on and see what happens next though but i am gonna wait because i love the dub so much though but that is where the episode ends. and by gosh by golly that was a really good episode and i really enjoyed every single moment of it though and dang man that really it, it just really hit home in terms of just saying you know what what a real hero really means to everyone and you just got to see that within Aerie's eyes and you can't go back and not look at that episode and look at Aerie's eyes and saw that she was shocked because at first she was really only concerned for him though but then you kind of see little brief moments where Aerie was like wait a minute why is this person doing this for me wait could he actually have the strength to actually stand up against overall and I can actually be saved and actually do something and it, it was just oh goodness it was so heartwarming and oh man emotions were everywhere though but I'm really concerned about Togeda because I feel like this dude actually probably lost his powers for good since this was probably the perfected um, version of that drug though but we'll have to see about all of this stuff and the repercussions on all the aftermath um hopefully within the next episode or so as you know things are about to play off though but that's pretty much it for this episode though but y'all gotta let me know down in the comment section below what all you thought about this episode as a whole though because I really enjoyed it from beginning to end but that is all that I have for y'all for this week's episode review over My Hero Academia. So if you really like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and that bell to keep up to date on all things My Hero Academia. With Togeda out of commission, will Izuku manage to finish the job? And what is this insane power Overhaul is going to use now? And what bright or dark future, bits or not I see, for Izuku's and Aerie's future? We'll have to find out about this and more in next week's episode review called Unforeseen Hope. So remember y'all, until whatever video I make next, go beyond. Pass Ultra!